everybody welcome to the sweat corner for those joining us for the very first time welcome you all welcome hey sweat friend how are you guys doing okay i've waited long enough to film this video today is the 12 month anniversary of my dad's passing right at the time of filming this video it is literally when we got the call that my dad is no longer alive. <sighs> I know I for sure never told you guys exactly um, how he passed. I know I mentioned a few moments that he went like this, but I never shared exactly what happened. Right. This all started on December the 14th. Yes, we were in Malfish Bay. We had done the engagement um, on the, I mean, the hanging of the flag the Sunday before. Negoti last minute negotiations was happening. It was that week. It was hectic. Um, and so the Tuesday we came back from negotiations and. My mom is like, your dad is not doing well. I'm doing this little tissues. Shoot. Okay, hopefully it doesn't go so bad. Well, my sister runs to the room. My dad is asleep. She checks on him and she's like, nope, he's not doing well. He's not doing well at all. He's not doing well. And she's like, you need to rush into the hospital. There we are, tired as no one's business, or traditional attire that we are wearing from going to the other side. Grab my dad with my, my sister, my uncle and me and we put him in the car and we rushed him off to the state hospital because he's not doing well. And then she's already like in the car. Ugh, I have a feeling this is COVID. My sister is a doctor. So she already is seeing the signs. So we're like, oh, are you sure? No, nope, this really might be COVID. She doesn't care what the test is saying. She thinks this might be COVID. My uncle is in the car because we had to help my dad into the car. That's how weak he was. Rushed into the hospital. My sister does her magic there. We get him onto a bed. She talked to a nurse, asked for a doctor on call immediately. And my sister's already telling the nurse, I think this is a COVID case and all of that stuff. So she's literally telling all of this. In the meantime, we call my older brother and wife, like, hey, dad is not doing well. We've rushed into the hospital. They stay close to the town, to the hostel at the time. They're like, okay, we're coming. We'll see. We'll be there now. So they come and they join us. We went for my sister to do her doctorly things. Um, they're testing, commanding, demanding, asking questions, all of that stuff, being a doctor that she is. She goes there, luckily, I don't know if people, I don't remember now if people know her or don't know her at the time, but anyway, she's there, she's very commanding when she's in her role, you know, like, you will take her seriously, she's that person. So, not in a bad way, but you, there's just something about when she's in that mode. So she's there, she's concerned, they're there, and they're like, yeah, we need to know, we need to test already immediately to see whether this is COVID, blah, 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 but it's at night, so the lab is closed, so we can't do samples because then there's no one to test, they only open the next morning. She's like, no, we have to find an alternative way to do it. My sister finds a way, or the machine, the doctor will call, figure out a way how to test my father's lungs. And do like I don't remember what they did exactly. I'll put it here, and then she's like, mm, "The lungs look like janky. I think not in those words. It is COVID." And then the on-call guy, um, doctor, uh, agrees. Mister immediately is like, "No, we need to put him in the COVID ICU. Um, this case is going to COVID ICU. This is not like here because he needs oxygen, and the saturation had gone down to like 30 or 40, and then it needs to go back up to like 90. Blah blah blah. The saturation was low." There she is, doing her doctor stuff. Um, mind you, we left my mom at home in a panic. My younger brother could not come because traditionally, that week of your marriage situation, you're supposed to get out of the house. And my sister, of course, still doing her doctor stuff. So at this point, she's like trying to work out that he gets um, transferred to the unit before we even go home. It is, we stayed there for, I feel like, forever and yet not so long. Um, 
I guess was the adrenaline in me, like, and I'm, I'm, I'm I know, you know, for me, for sure, I'm, I'm praying, I'm like, I'm literally like, I'm praying that time, I'm, I am like, praying, <sighs> we get an ambulance, we transfer my dad over to the COVID ICU ward, immediately goes to oxygen, you have to then get the nurse, of course, with all the situations, I don't know what they call those coverings, that they need to wear protective gear, he's in there. By the time we left the hospital and made sure he was settled in to my sister's satisfaction, it was 4 a.m. We were anyway prayerful, but weddings don't stop, so we continue with my brother's wedding, planning of his wedding, because traditionally weddings don't stop. We are already this close, we're going to continue on. Um, I decided, no, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to um, calm my, my emotions and judge off of my sister's one. My sister's reaction will tell me how I should feel about my dad's uh, situation because she's the doctor. So she has the the ability to be like, this is, this is going to go just down. This is not working. Or she can be like, I think you must just. But COVID being COVID and at the time, it's like still new and all of that stuff. She's like, mm, COVID is very weird in the way that it shows up or portrays itself in a person's body so she can't really vibe <laughs> it's a blood from flesh anyway she can't vibe um exactly like what this means but it's good that the situations have gone up wednesday to go on with our things in the morning and then of course we always make time to go see my dad i think we see him like twice that wednesday no, we see him once the, the Wednesday, like it's okay. He's, it's a situation look like they are a little bit low, but they're doing okay. My sister asked a lot of questions about the oxygen and all of that stuff, how his lungs are doing, what we should get him and all of that. What we could, what the hospital could not be public hospital, but it's already like, like literally state. What they could not give us, um, we were going to buy at the, at, the, at, the, at the pharmacy. So they told us what extra we needed to get. And so we got to help with the treatment and we brought the stuff. Looked like he was doing well. He was even eating, and and his voice sounded very nice. Thursday in the morning we go, and my sister's like, mm, don't look like they're doing so well, blah blah blah. And the oxygen tanks at the state are not really all that, so they want to transfer him to Swakop. Um, and so I gauge over her reaction, and she's like, it's not really. She doesn't like the way the. The saturations are going um and she asked them don't you can you not sit him blah 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 but his voice sounds so strong like we're having proper conversations with him while while he's there he's even making jokes you know and then he's already annoying the nurses with i need to go to my brother's wedding and we're already like like how is he even going to like are we going to put him in like oh ppe those are those the suits are going to be a ppe so he can look from the ambulance and be like oh there my son is are we going to make my brother and the wifey come by in the morning so they can he can see how they look after they get married before they do the picture thing just so that he can see them how exactly are we going to do this whole situation and do we are literally everybody i think on their own was prayerful i know i was i was really prayerful i was like jesus let him just be at the wedding this is his son this is his last born i mean the fact that the child is getting married is a miracle in itself and like he's so grown and we are so proud of him and all of that good stuff so my brother you know guys you know my younger brothers i'm not saying i just be mean but you know how younger brothers our younger siblings are like they are so spoiled to capacity it's not even funny so when they grow up to be more mature and unspoiled in some certain instances you're like oh thank you jesus there is still hope you know what i mean i don't know yeah he's not gonna think it's funny i'm sorry in them sorry anyway but yeah so that happens so the thursday night um when we go see him um it's like my sister's like let's go so we see him in the afternoon my brother everybody go see him my mom also sees him everybody's like making jokes with him he's like i don't want those bananas bring me new bananas like that he has a request and he wants tea he loves his tea oh my gosh my dad loved his tea and that and so we get he we at least get to see him not not like close we are literally at like outside at the door and we're like talking to him while he's in the room so we're not like close by him it's like it's in the sun so just before we're like you cannot contrive in covid stuff it's, it's we are outside but we're talking to him you know because we can see him while we're talking to him i even remember taking pictures 
So, right. Um, he has a voice. Oh, I, I have literally have a voice like my dad. Like things can be going on it, but my voice sounds so strong. Like you don't think, like it doesn't really break that easily. I literally, every time I think about it, I think about that. And like, it's not like a breakable voice where you'll be like, oh, she's supposed to sound a little bit like, but I don't know. You can hear it in my breathing or the way I put a sentence together that, like, oh, this is hard. But when I speak, it doesn't seem like this is so severe. You know what I mean? Like it's affecting her. So it's, we, I, I think I took my voice from my dad like that, the way that it's just anyway that one not the, the the base of it but just the way that i speak even if it's everything is wrong and i speak to you doesn't my voice itself doesn't portray like that it doesn't break in the middle of you know like that unless i'm like myself it's the way i breathe or you can see my tears in my eyes like that but never really in my voice oh i got some trick with the voice stuff my mom will make fun of him a little bit uh even my brother, the older one, of course, makes fun of him a little bit. We all laugh. After like, your tears so many like, hey, come, let's go. We have a lot of errands to run. So, because now we must separate. My brother also must go back to work. It's like between one and two, uh, must go back to work. Last minute, like that, you must run errands on Thursday because the next, the Friday, we won't have any time to do any of these things because that's the actual wedding. And we like talk to him and blah, blah, blah. And then they tell, tell us no. Um, a, they, they might send you to Swako because it's better respiratory respiration oxygen things there. So there we are, fine. I get from my sister and she's like, mm, she's not really sure how this is at, at all. She's like, mm. she's literally like mm, a little bit worried here, a little bit not. So I, we, I ask questions and then she's like, mm. she still doesn't like the situation. It's good that this, that she, he's going to Swako to be good for his breathing fine because it will really help the oxygen lines they are not working nicely and you know and all of that stuff fine in the evening around seven o'clock my we're supposed to go home to do our final cooking my sister's like this will make a quick turn um we had go, come, come from the, that's actually the engagement day the thursday come from engagement official engagement thursday the day before yes like that come from engagement and then she was like let's quickly make a turn we go make a turn me my sister-in-law and my and the three girls, my me, my sister, my sister-in-law, and they were just about to like put put him in the ambulance where he can go to Swakop now. For that, that has actually worked out, and that's good. And that's why my sister also wanted to go by to just see how he's doing and to tell him. But when we get there, he's even like, "Oh, I was about to call you guys and just tell you they're sending me to Swakop. Apparently, I would have actually called you when uh, when we were in Swakop already. You say that, yeah." Um, we're going, I don't know if it was seven, maybe it was like, like much later, guys. Don't my time frames of that day is just don't even like, I don't know, right? Um, so fine, so it, it could also be eight o'clock or nine or whatever. And so it happens. Um, we put him in there, we make him laugh, we're like, we'll come tomorrow after the wedding, we'll come make a turn, um, to just scream at the window and say, hi and we love you and all of that stuff and oh, then he's like ah my poor kids and we're like no it's not a problem i mean you are dead so like he's really making a struggle i don't even know what is the proper direct translation of Mujango to english in that sentence but um we go anyway and we put him in ambulance we wait for them to put him in properly they put him in the doctor is in there with him um his breathing doesn't doesn't saturation doesn't look so good he was already sweating and we're like ah, why is he sweating if he, if he was still on the bed and they are moving from the bed to the ambulance it's so like he walked from the bed to the ambulance and like that a lot of questions my sister's thinking out loud also fine so we're like you know we're going to be hopeful we're going home the oxygen thing might do him very well um in Swakop. and so we go home because we really have work to do and I went like, why well, have to prepare the, the chickens, I have to put them in the oven, I have to do the traditional one. We are the main chefs, me, my sister-in-law and my sister, we are the main chefs. Of course, our three people come and like, our like, yeah, sisters from the street, of course, all come and like help out. But for some reason that night, it was just us and the closest sisters. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, we are all like, literally we are like related. But anyway, so some of them do spend the day with us. Um, 
not the day but the evening we're there we're making we're laughing and dancing and making jokes and we're doing all of that stuff in the kitchen my mommy is there making us laugh and we are just there drinking and having a good time oven the chicken in the oven blah 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 blah, blah. <sighs> while we are there in the midst of it all my sister gets a notification that unfortunately your dad didn't make it he didn't make it to Swakop. No, yeah, he didn't make it to Swakop. He died on his way to Swakop. Still while well on the end, in transit, that's where his situation went down and he's gone. Um, my sister tells us the story and she tells us the family, tells guys, they didn't make it to Swakop. He's gone. What? What do you mean? Like, gone way? <laughs> no, like, he's gone. Like, he's no longer alive. We sat there for a moment. My mom was asleep. <sighs> Broke our heart. He's gone. As a moment everybody scattered i couldn't even cry i was like if i cry now you won't be able to stop me i can't but go tell my mom it was one of those things that i wish i would never have to tell my mom but that was the worst news if you ever tell my mom that one there um yeah we told the neighbors my street family and immediately they come and immediately it's a cry fest mind you it's always start crying i'm already drinking i'm hundred percent tipsy um i still people i still have food in the oven that's cooking meat in the oven that's cooking for the next day because my brother's ready marriage things are supposed to be like early in the morning so we have to cook because everything was supposed to be done in the morning <sighs> there we are the night was literally on one side you're crying you're crying and i kept like me my god cry right now and i'm like no we loved him too much not cry right now so then we are crying at the same time as we are still preparing for my brother's wedding my mother's like this is i know it's hard for all of us but this my, my, my younger brother for his sake for his sake we must give him a day that he will remember as a good day because it's his wedding so then we are halfway crying, halfway cooking the chicken, halfway crying, halfway making what, halfway crying, halfway drinking. I do remember I went around. <laughs> okay, one of the funny things. I do remember going around and um, I opened a bottle of gin. And then I was there giving everybody shots. And the people don't want shots. I'm like, why don't you want to take my shots? You want to take my shots? Like that. Because my siblings, I literally, I think I got everybody drunk. The, the next day, I was like, we were all just like, I don't even know how we survived the night. But that happened anyway and yeah told people that we needed to tell he's gone and the the hard part about about your a parent or a family member dying of covid is the amount of regulations or procedure whatever you call it that must go into the funeral process he passed on that if thursday evening friday we had the wedding saturday we got a call from the ministry we had to go to the ministry of health we needed to talk to the the organizing committee of the covid funerals things and then we had to start planning for the funeral Mind you, when we went there to the ministry, they immediately gave you how many days you have. At the time, you buried your family within four days, family member, within four days. We couldn't view his body. We couldn't see his, yeah, like see his face. We couldn't view the face. We couldn't... This is a lot of couldn't. There was a lot of you cannot do this, you cannot do that. You only allow 20 people at the funeral, 10 people, whatever. They are going to be more than that. People must be in the groups. You must have a small group who's going to come sit with you. Everybody must be one meter apart. The military will be there. This, the, the, 
the chaplain won't do the officiating it was a lot of regulations and here and here and mind you we fought so hard because for them because it passed already the thursday night we friday saturday we were supposed to be on sunday we had to fight for them for fight and beg and, and literally like and explain the situation at hand why we just could not happen and they gave us some leeway we ended up burying my dad i think the tuesday or the wednesday i think the wednesday oh, yeah i think the wednesday but we ended up burying, burying him then mind you while we were preparing all of this you're literally going back and forth they give you a whole list of what to do do's and don'ts um we had to deal with the fact that my dad was on the, the ambulance on, on route did not come back to to Wafish Bay they went straight to Sarkov so they didn't want to let his body go so we had to be like technically he died on this side so technically you cannot just they were supposed to turn back to where they came from why did they go ahead to Sarkov all of that stuff by that default we are allowed to bury him in Wafish Bay they brought the body back and then we were like but technically we want to view because at the time technically you couldn't even view no what do you mean you cannot view like no but how do we know that the body you brought to us is the right one so technically <laughs> we fought we fought a lot of technicalities and like a lot of praying and a lot of technicalities and like just hoping and while we're there fighting and just stay and then you're like yeah fine and then by technicality at least my brother got to view my younger brother he was the most important one because he was the only one who hadn't seen my dad since my dad left to the hospital and went to view fine at least that worked so the rest of us couldn't go view. The rest of us couldn't say good. Why did we just fall asleep? It's late at night. People are just awake. And it was a... And the stupid dogs. Anyway. So all of that happens. And we get to bury. But there is such an impersonal way of burying your loved one when they've died of COVID that I feel like I think we may, so my sister and I haven't talked about this. I think we even told the social workers already. There's going to be a lot of mental health cases after this whole COVID thing has like died down. Out of people being traumatized because of the way they needed to bury their loved ones. No proper send off. No. No say. You know, we, we, we as people believe like you must at least see the face to say a proper goodbye and be like, oh, that person is really gone. It's, it's just, it's so, like, that person should, like that, you know, like, that person is really gone. And you, we as black people, we are used to, like, a huge community, the whole entire community coming together to be there for the family and be there for each other to bury. This was, like, that did not even happen. Like, and then the worst is you had to deal with all of the, the, what do you call this, what do you call the view of people when everybody's literally like yeah but if we come there are we going to be safe it's a covert zone if you guys all being tested and all of that extra stuff are we going to be safe and all of, like mind you this is family members like are we going to be safe damn it you're coming at own risk <laughs> not in that way i'm just saying we had to do with all of that on top of everything else right because that man is not born by himself he has brothers who want to come now every decision like not even moving him out of Wafish Bay to bury him in the north for example was a whole situation because now the family is like yeah but he must be buried in the north it's not our fault it's government regulations there's nothing we can do we bury him here here we are even lucky we got him to back to Wafish Bay to put him in there like and it's like remind you like now it's like saturday sunday monday tuesday i think it's tuesday we buried if not Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday we buried. Mind you, we are running those. The Saturday, Sunday doesn't even count. The Sunday doesn't even count because Sunday is when it's everything is closed. You can't do nothing, and we want to at least get him a casket. We want to at least have a program. We want to at least inform people, you know, like that. We want to at least have some sort of like normal scene, the way that we bury on our dead in the best way that we can when we lay him, put him in the ground for the last time. We want to do it the best way that we can, and we cannot do it with this hushed you cannot and then every time you must run so security you know, with the ministry and be like is this on the in the police is, is this allowed no that is not allowed okay we're cutting down to here is this yeah no you must be a bubble what does a bubble mean this is blah 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 and all of that in the family and all, and the family must do they want their one they also want to have a man 
I think because I've shared a lot about my my my, my parents passing. For me, it's therapy. This is therapy. Um, to openly share with no judgment. I hope. Um, my story. But yeah, today is that day. I told you my story officially now. The real thing what happened. And it's a. It's a year. It's been a year that we wouldn't. That I don't even think he would. <laughs> If he had the choice, would be like, no, my wife is going to go. I'm out of the day with the kids. It has been a, it's been a hard year. Um, in that sense, we miss him so much. Like his presence is just not. It's like felt heavily within the house, within the family. It's amazing how, he, like the, the fathering spirit is just. It's missed. It's missed in the house. Being the human that he is, as flawed as he was, when it came to like raising us and then you know fathering us, he did the best that he could. Um, and raising different personalities, also he did the best that he could. That's the one thing I think is, as children, I think I mentioned this all the time, is that we thank God for the bond that we've had with my dad. We thank God that it was. It's never a matter of I didn't spend much time with him. I could have, I would have. It is literally how much we're going to miss his presence. It was always that calming voice. He was always that singing in our house. <laughs> he was the guy with the suits every Sunday. He must send you a picture and he's nice suit. People who know him will be like that suit every single time. All the pictures he's wearing a suit. He loved to sing. He loved, he had an amazing bass. He loved to sing. I think I say this all the time. The ones, one of the things I miss about him is his voice. Every time we go home, we sing. Every time we leave home, we sing. He must sing. It's just our thing. And I miss him. I, I, I really do. I miss him. I miss him a lot. I, I, I miss him. Like For me, it's, it's a covering that's, that's, that I feel like is, is gone. I've mentioned this before. And it's been hard dealing with him not him not being here and him not being alive. But I think the one thing that I will take away that we have taken away or that who for my dad is the one verse that is on his on his tombstone where it's like there's no point in arguing with God when you're not the one who's in charge of your destiny, something like that. In Ecclesiastes, I'll put it here so that you guys can like go read it. Um he was very uh about stuff like that. If I go, I go in a sense. So as much as you miss him, it's like what is what has happened has happened and we can't bring him back from the dead. It it is done. Um but we will continue to to miss him who he is, who he was, the ever presence in our household. Yeah, because it took off of the shoulders of trying to be a parent. We could just be kids. Now we have to parent ourselves in our young adult life um, because there's no more there I can run to for advice. There's no more that. There's no more. You can't go there and be like, I just want to be a kid for a minute. You can't. But if we, like, we really miss him. I just wanted to do this on this first year anniversary. And I'm really hoping my siblings and I find a tradition to do something every time for, on this day, on this specific day. Because we, we really love him and we really miss him a lot, a lot. And Christmas will never be the same without him. Or December is never the same without him. But I really feel like this whole week I've been in mourning, putting a brave face on because I know my mom will want a person to go on and not break down. And she would say, you are one of the luckiest people because you have such a relationship with your dad. That's the one thing my mom always talked about and was like how much my dad loved his kids. Yeah, he loved his kids. Um, thank you for letting me vent on this day. Thank you for letting me be in my feelings on this day. Thank you for just um, listening to my video and thank you for the support you've given me for all these videos and allowing me to just share my part. And I really hope that the trauma of people who bury their parents like this doesn't last with us for a long time. Hopefully, uh, we pray that God heals it and that he just takes it away and feels it with something a little bit better. To just, it will never go away, but it at least soothes that area. Like me. I've been loved so well. 
on my dead. Lost grace that taught my heart.